Um, I, my name is Christy Drenner. I'm the Director of Connectional Resources, um, Treasurer and Chief Benefits Officer. And we are grateful that you have chosen to come to this training. It's a new training for our area, but we thought, you know, people learn in different ways, some visual, some by seeing, some by doing. And so we thought, you know, charge conference paperwork, you only do it once a year. So it's kind of good to have a refresher or maybe learn it in a different way. And um, so that's why we decided to do this. But before we start, I would love to open us in prayer. So if you'll pray with me. Dear God, we are grateful for this time. We are thankful for all the people on this call who serve their church in this way by completing this administrative task. While the tasks of the church office are not always the most fun or exciting, they are so critical to the ministry so that we can plan and grow into the future and observe your call on our lives. We are grateful for this time. We ask that you would open our minds and our hearts to learn what you would have us to learn this evening. It's in your son's holy stand we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to turn over the show to Shirley Miller to introduce herself and there you go. Um, I think I unmuted myself. I hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so I wanna thank you all for being here uh, and spending part of your evening with us. We'll be done in under an hour, depending on questions, et cetera. I uh, appreciate all the work you do. Um, I appreciate the district administrators who are here to help us answer questions. It turns out I don't monitor chat well while I'm talking, but we will stop and, and take care of all your questions as we go. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to approach this as if you're new to filling out our online forms, uh, but uh, for those of you who've been doing it a while, and this morning and this evening, I recognize names for folks that have been doing it a while, you might see this as a refresher. Uh, we have not changed the compensation or UMPIP forms since 2017. We did make some slight changes to the roster for this year. So when we get to that, I'll uh, tell you about that. <clears throat> um, so we'll just jump in. I've got, a, I sent you the PowerPoint, mostly as a reference, or if you print it out, you can follow along. I'm actually going to demonstrate the online forms online. So that way uh, you can, um, follow along there and see how it works, see how the math works, that kind of thing. So um, again, feel free to post questions or even interrupt. So tonight we're gonna talk briefly about the online portal forms and login information. Spend most of our time on best practices for ministerial compensation form and the UMPIP form. We'll spend some time on the online church roster. We'll glance at the required printable forms and then Mary Vela, representing the Center for Leadership Development will talk about the marks of fruitfulness forms. So we'll cover all that. It seems like a lot, but actually it'll, I think, go quickly. If you ask, why do we have to do this? Mm -hmm. uh, the Book of Discipline tells us, it's in paragraph 246, within the pastoral charge, the basic unit in the connectional system of the United Methodist Church is the charge conference. The charge conference shall therefore be organized from the church or churches in every pastoral charge as set forth in the Constitution. It shall meet annually for the purposes set forth in paragraph 247 and may meet at other times as indicated in number seven below. So if you have a book of discipline and want to read in more detail, you can, but just to lay the groundwork that your district at, uh, di superintendent and the conference office did not make up charge conference. Somewhere back when they made up the book of discipline, they put in charge conference. So that's why we do this. <clears throat> uh, the online portals we're going to uh, forms we're going to talk about tonight: the ministerial compensation report, the UMPIP worksheet, and the online roster are all at this website, ntcumconline.org. I'll show you how to link to that. You you've probably been sent. Someone in your church has been sent instructions and overviews. It has the link. But both of them have the link to this online form. Every August 1st, we reset your church's password to the GCFA number. So your login is always the GCFA number. And now your password is that number, unless you've already gone in and changed it. The GCFA number is unique to your church. It starts with either the seven or a nine. It's got six digits. If you don't know your number or can't remember it, you can call your district office or if they're not available, call me and we'll tell you what the number is. The reason we reset the password is that we live in an itinerant system. So the preachers move and then we also have staff changes. So you don't, no one has to remember the password from the previous year with this system. They just start over. Uh, and um, that's worked out well. But anyway, you can call us and get 
the GCFA number if you don't really have that GCFA number. So, um, and so now I think we're going to go live. Yeah. So the the next well, I, the stuff I'm going to be talking about, you can find on pages six through 15 of the uh, PowerPoint or the uh, or the PDF I sent to you. But I'm going to stop sharing uh, this PowerPoint and I'm going to now uh, go ahead and share the live screen. <clears throat> she says confidently. OK. So. In your printed materials, it tells you how to get to our online forms place, but if you forget, you can always go to our conference website, then go to Connectional Resources, then go to Charge Conference. And then under Online Forms is the link where you're going to put in, remember, your GCFA number is your username and your GCFA number is your password. The system's already defaulted to your charge conference forms 2022. If you are actually filling out a compensation report for 2021, you can change it there. But for charge conference sake, you don't have to adjust the year at all. Uh, I checked with the East District and uh, asked if I could use their site. <clears throat> so when you click on your church, when you enter your church's DCFA number twice, you'll get a password uh, page. You can change your password, or if you hit cancel, you, ugh, darn it. Okay, sorry, let me get in again. So I had this open and it must not have liked me leaving it open so long. You can change the password, you can hit cancel, and it'll take you to what I call your landing page. It'll say, welcome Camp Wisdom, or it'll say, welcome, um, you know, Paradise, or whatever church you're at, it'll say welcome, because I'm using East District, it says welcome East District. The instructions and the overview of the forms were sent to you probably by your district admin, but they're also here. So the overview talks about all three of the forms, the ministerial compensation report, the UMPIP and the online roster. The instructions go step by step through the uh, ministerial compensation report and the UMPIP worksheet. So those are available to you all the time. So we're going to start with the compensation report. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm gonna, you can tell, did this this morning, but I'll start from the beginning. Um, I'll be someone else. Um, when you click on the add new, this page will show up. Your church will already be in this first gray box. Since I'm using East District, it says East District. But you then type it again over here. So if you're Bogota or First Paris or whatever church you are, you type it there. Since I am East District, I'm gonna type East District as my church. Then you type in the pastor, you're doing the compensation report form for. If you only have one pastor in your church, that's easy. If you have several pastors, you're gonna do one for each pastor. Uh, so this time we'll just do it for someone else. Then you can say, is a senior or associate? Click the down pick. Since you're doing my assumption right now is so you're filling this out for 2022, January 1, 2022 is when your salary starts for your pastor. You would leave it at January. Many of you have moves during the mi middle of the year and it's July, so you can switch it to July. Some churches don't change their salaries in January, so when they change them like in April, then they need to select April. But this is charge conference season. We'll assume January is um, the month you're, when this starts. Compensation is effective. And a grayed out box means you can't fill it in the district's east district. So whatever district you're in, your district will be in that box. Can you, um, so let's do this a little bit. I'm gonna go in a little closer. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to fill this out in a couple of different ways, but uh, I'm going to use the minimum salary for a full-time elder or deacon that hasn't changed for a couple of years now in, in their first year. And that is $50,236. That's the minimum salary. I'm going to do the first example with no parsonage. So I would tab down, it fills in the zeros for me. And then in box four, did it not fill it in? That is not good, hold on. 
it tells you uh, the total. So you can, some churches have grants or equitable compensation. And so maybe your church has been awarded uh, uh, $5,000. If that's the case, the church is gonna pay 45, the conference is sending $5,000 to you for the year, and it still comes out to 50,236. Or maybe you have a pastor who wants an account, non-accountable business allowance, which is just cash you give them monthly without a reimbursable, and so that's there. Oh, well, that's a lot, isn't it? So anyway, so it still comes out to 50,236. So line four is all the, well, I would say cash, that your pastor, the salary they intend to be paid. <clears throat> if, it, you, if it's not a, our uh, legislation says that if you uh, don't have a parsonage that the housing allowance should be $12,000 for the year. Again, this is an annual report. You would fill this out annually for January through December or if you have a pastor change in July, still use annual numbers. So it's always filled out annually and then and then you can see that the total there is $62,236. So that is uh, how that would work out in this case for, um, for a non-parsonage clergy compensation report. Now, maybe what you really want to do is have some money in utilities. So you can do that. And it still comes out to $62,236. So basically, Whatever the cash, if you're a non-parsonage and even parsonage, if you're a non-parsonage clergy person, whatever the total compensation is gonna be, you can arrange among your cash salary, your non-accountable business allowance, housing allowance and utilities. Um, there are some rules about that. You can't have all your money in housing if you're a full-time pastor. And if anyone wants to talk to me offline about that, I can explain the rules to you. We assume salary, assume housing and utilities. So, but you can take that total and make it be what it works for you. <clears throat> Any money you put in housing and utilities, for example, then becomes a, a bill, an IRS issue. And that's on y'all to figure out what you do. But here's how it's a semi-legal issue and Chris can jump in for us. When this salary is voted on at charge conference, you can't then change your housing allowance whenever you want. Uh, it is a charge conference action that's set. And so this is, if the IRS comes wanting to audit you, this is your proof that you had this much money in housing, whatever it was. So, so you can't just, if you, you can change your housing allowance throughout there if you need to, but it's not just something you and the secretary, or you by yourself can do. It becomes an action, official action at your church. So um, we can talk more about that if you need to, but that's, I just want to show you, I could do the numbers. So now, Let's do a parsonage. So if you have a you are a pastor or your pastor's living in a parsonage, then you change this to yes. The box grays out, there's no housing allowance. Mm -hmm. And so parsonages handle um, <clears throat> utilities differently. Some churches, the office pays all the utilities at the parsonage and the pastor never sees the bill, mm -hmm. but it's still part mm -hmm. of your basic $50,000 $36 compensation. So you've moved 5,000 out of your cash to 5,000 in utilities. So it's also possible that maybe you, you and a parsonage would like to just be directly reimbursed for some sort of utilities. And so you could say, well, I wanna put a thousand dollars. I'm using numbers that are hard to divide by 12, right? There. And so as you can see, the cat, all adding all these lines together still comes out to the minimum salary of $50,236. So I'm gonna leave that there for the moment, but that I hope shows the different ways that you can take whatever, and this would be true if you're a part-time pastor or whatever, you know, if you're making $2 million or 10,000, whatever it is, these are the ways you can use the uh, compensation report to distribute that income and in housing. Um, <clears throat> so, the next thing I wanna talk about um, are salary reductions. This is designed to help the local church know how much to pay you. We will come back to line 10. If you're a full-time pastor um, in, at the 2020, 2012 uh, general conference, they voted that pastors need to help 
need to contribute to their pension and they need to contribute at least 1% in order to get full benefit of their pension. So that's a huge long conversation that if you wanna do offline, we can do. So line 10, and this is, you go to the UMPIP worksheet to figure out what you wanna do. So we'll come back to line 10, similarly line 17 and 18, because you can, a pastor can do their UMPIP either before tax, after tax Roth or after tax. So those lines will fill, come back and fill in after we do the worksheet. Line 11 through 15 have to do with the pastor's health insurance. So I'm gonna select that this is a full-time pastor right now. Did you see the benefits pop in? For 2022, the church for a full-time pastor will be billed $11,100 for that person's health insurance. They might decide to pick a plan that costs more than that, uh, there's one more plan that costs more than that, and that would work out to $468 a year. So that's a salary reduction. We're not asking the local church to pay anything beyond this as a benefit. Everything else the pastor might select, dental, vision, a more expensive plan, would be a salary reduction. Similarly, if the pastor uh, has his, his or her spouse or family, uh, your church does it's a salary reduction so maybe you have just your spouse on there this is a made-up number the nine thousand but it's nine thousand dollars that will come out of the salary to support the spouse's health insurance they could pick a health flex a flexible health health flexible spending account like say i want to have 600 extra dollars for extra health stuff so that would come out of my um being overage so all of lines 11 through 15 are what i call we call health insurance overages that the church, the church is expected to pick up the 11,100 if everything the pastor selects for their medical insurance and been a, uh, is over that, then it's a salary reduction. And you can see that then it's adding up how much a reduction that is right there. And then line 20 gives you what's left doesn't include housing. Remember, it's line four minus line 16 and 19 to divide by 24 or 12 or however you pay your pastor. It's to help the local church figure out what kind of check do I need to write to the pastor. So though all those reductions before tax and after tax are to help you and the local church figure out uh, what is the actual salary check going to look like, not counting housing stuff. So those are the reduction sections. So then, then we mentioned the required benefits. If you're a full-time pastor in our conference, then you are in our pension program, which is called CRISP, and in the conference health insurance, which is administered through HealthFlex. If you're a three-quarter pastor, you cannot be in the health insurance, but you can be in the pension or you can waive it. If you're a half-time pastor, you can be in the pension program or you can waive it. A quarter time pastor is not qualified for the pension and that's per general conference, not us. Retired pastors also do not qualify for the pension program and TDS pastors do not qualify. So we're for the sake of illustration using the full-time pastor so that you can see uh, the benefits and what's going on there. And they, this is billed to your church. It's not a salary reduction, uh, it is a benefit. And uh, if you are a half-time pastor and you waive pension, uh, the first time you're at your new local church, your district will request that you fill out a pension waiver form that's notarized, and they'll send it to me so that I can note that you're waiving pension. And uh, we actually keep those forms forever. But, um, but anyway, for tonight, we're talking about a full-time pastor. So <clears throat> if some churches set up in their budget a reimbursement uh, amount. So they say, okay, pastor head, we're gonna put $2,000 or let's just make it easy. We're gonna put $2,400 a year in our church budget then that you can turn in receipts <clears throat> within 60 days, right? To be reimbursed for. So if you take uh, the lay leader out to lunch and you pay for it and you wanna turn in receipt, you can. If you um, go to a continuing education event, and you, your registration and expenses, as long as there's money, you can turn in receipts to get it uh, or uh, items like that. 
that this is a user to lose it kind of thing. Like if the pastor only uses $2,000, you don't write a check then at the end of the year for $400 to the pastor, because this is a budget line item. All these, this is only based on receipts that are handed in with proper documentation in a proper time frame to be reimbursed. Not every church, you can at the end of the year, like take that extra 400 and put it on then 2023's budget if you want, or you can start over, however you want to do that. Uh, if you don't have a, an adopted employer reimbursable expense plan, then you just leave it on no and you can't fill it out. In your charge conference paperwork, there is an adoption agreement for uh, reimbursables that I think you're required to turn in every year. But that doesn't mean that you are actually putting money in here that's on you and the local church's budget. So, uh, <clears throat> and then a totally optional lines, 22 and 23. Uh, some, some, meaning two or three churches, have an automobile uh, for their pastor. And then more churches uh, have what we call dependent health flex premiums. So this is, if your church... This is not a salary reduction, but your church as a benefit says, hey, I'm going to pay for all your family's health insurance. Then you would type in in your church, whatever that is, if it's 14,000, if it's 9,000, they're never going to be even numbers. Uh, even numbers said to me, we haven't done the math, but <clears throat> for sake of illustration, you would put that in there. So again, uh, 22 and 23 are completely optional and not very many churches use it, but we wanted to point out those boxes. So let's say uh, you, you are either the administrative assistant or the pastor of your church or even the SPRC chair, and you've got to get it all approved. And so you start to fill this out. In order to save it, you've got to have something in these um, boxes. So, but I haven't gone to SPRC yet. I don't know when they're going to sign it. I haven't talked to church treasurer. So you can put in an X and you'll be able to save the document. Uh, if it's, you'll find if you don't fill these out, and then you click save, it tells you you can't do it. So, but in order not to lose your work, because no one wants to lose their work, just put an X in there, or you can, I wouldn't honestly put their names in until it's gone to them, because that way you can be confident that you've actually met with SPRC or your church treasurer. <clears throat> I would prefer that you would put full elder or whatever you've got in this blank, but if you don't fill it out, no one's gonna, it won't matter. So uh, this section that says for district and conference use only, there are two not Roman numerals that you can rely on. Roman numeral eight is the pension plan compensation. So that number is goes toward the UMPIP match. Uh, it's a number that you can check and see. <clears throat> um, to, and so also you can apply, some churches can apply for insurance supplement. That's the number they use to find what their eligibility level is. So that number we use. The number 10 we added about three or four years ago, and that's the total pastoral cost of the church. So that includes everything. If you put money, if you put funding in optional benefits, in reimbursables, the required benefits of uh, pension and health insurance, housing, everything that you're paying the pastor will show up here. So I have worked with a church or two that says we have $90,000 and that's got to cover the required benefits <clears throat> and everything else. And then so we can work backwards. And every time you change a number up here, uh, like if I change this to, you know, may, and they're getting paid more than minimum, tab down, that, that total changes. So that gives you the option to play around. If, if that's the way your church is operating, we only have this much cash for a part-time or full-time pastor, then you can uh, look at that number and it'll help you track where you are and all that. Did I leave that off? Sorry. Okay. So <clears throat> let, does anyone have another, you know, there are a lot of questions in chat. Have they been answered? Nope, we're all, we're on top of it. Okay, great. Okay. Wait, hang on Thanks. one second. So I'm going to Galloway. Sammy okay. just came over the previous pastor had expense reimbursable account. Not sure I need or want this. What is the process 
I need to complete to renegotiate this account. So that's just a conversation that you would have with your church as you're setting the budget for next year. That is an important point. If you move mid-year, whatever the amount for the reimbursable expense is just for half of that year. So if the line item is 2000 and there's a mid-year move, that pastor should have only spent 1000 and there's a 1000 left for the back end of the year. So that's really just a conversation with your local church. Since it doesn't affect compensation, it's more of a budget question. That's correct. Okay, I'm going to save this. We're going to come back to it. Now we're going to go to the UMPIP worksheet. <clears throat> and you notice that it filled in Keith's name. Look at this red line here. If you are a quarter time retired or TBS, do not fill this out. If you are three quarter, one half and waiving pension, do not fill this out. You don't, you're done. You don't have to come do this worksheet, but if you are full-time or if you're part-time not waiving, then you need to come do this worksheet. The compensation worksheet was a uh, compensation report contained annual numbers. Now we're moving to monthly numbers. So the instructions are embedded here for people who like to read instructions, but, uh, and the, the instructions on the PowerPoint or the PDF are pages 16 through 18 of this, that, but, uh, so this is a worksheet. This worksheet does not talk to the compensation report. You have to fill this out, then you'll have to annualize it. Then you go back to the compensation report and fill in your number. This is just to help you figure out the 1%. Again, in 2012, and it's all explained down here at the bottom of the worksheet, the general conference voted that uh, in order for a pastor to receive a full 3% match from the local church, he or she had to contribute at least 1% to their pension in the UMPIP category. So at that point, and I would say almost 100% of our pastors do that, but uh, again, this is a worksheet. It's gonna help the pastor determine the 1%, then decide if he or she wants to do just 1% or more, and whether they want to be before tax, after tax, or after tax Roth. So let's take the same minimum salary. We'll say there's no parsonage. I'm sorry if I typed that, okay, right. So that's the base compensation. Uh, they didn't put anything in anything on the first simple one in utilities and they're putting 12, well, let's make it harder. Let's say they're gonna put 2000 in utilities and 10,000 in housing. So you can see that their pension plan compensation, which is salary plus housing, is 62,236. The 1% amount is $622.36. We always round up to 623. So I'm being paid minimum salary. I don't really feel, what is 623 a month? It's about $52. I think, oh, okay, well, I can afford $100. So I think I don't wanna do my 1%. So I think I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do $100 and I can change this to dollars. You don't wanna, so then I'm saying, I wanna contribute before tax as a salary reduction, $100 a month to uh, my UMPIP. It may be that 1% is about all I can handle. So I'm gonna put in one, leave it at percent. And then that's, that's what's going to <clears throat> be what I, put in for my annual um, UMPIP contribution. A pastor can decide if they want to be before tax, after tax, after tax Roth. I've actually had some pastors use at least two of these. Uh, most don't. Most use before tax and an increasing percentage of folks are doing after tax. Um, and again, you could put in the 1%. Or you can say, again, I can afford $100 a month. So I think I want to do $100 after tax raw. So you, the pastor gets to pick. So if you are filling this out for a pastor, you need to be in conversation with him or her about what they want to do. You can fill the worksheet out together. He or she can say, well, I want to do the bare minimum or I'd like to do more. There's actually a maximum limit that the IRS set, sets. And I think it's, I'm going to get this, correct me if I'm wrong. It's like, um, 26.5 if you're over 55, you know, $26,500 if you're over 55 because uh, there's a catch-up or 50. I don't remember because I couldn't afford that. You know, if I'm making 50,000 a year, I'm probably going to look for something smaller than the IRS max. We will check you on that. 
uh, so if you uh, do the max, we'll make sure. So, so this form is to help you figure out what you're going to do. We have some larger churches that have a whole bunch of lay people in addition to clergy and UMPIP. And so they say, surely you're not, you don't have to tell the general board, which is also West Path, we will. So if, if you in filling out click church, then I'm not going to let the general board of pensions know what your pastor needs deducted and, and uh, you'll need to contact them and make sure that's correct. So you get the correct bill from them. We always say put conference and then it's on me if we get it correct or not. <clears throat> but anyway, so let's go back and do a parsonage. So if you have a parsonage, you lost the housing line, right? Now you're going to put in your income. So say I'm going to put in the 45 to 36 and then $5,000 is in utilities because there's going to be parsonage utilities somehow. So again, the form in, G in West, West Path, the general board, factor in a value for the parsonage. You don't have to do the math. It's been factored in. And so the 1% for a pastor in the parsonage at a minimum salary would be $627.95, which is $628 a year or about $52, $53 a month. So same process then. The pastor says, okay, I think I want to be billed 1%. So I'm going to pick that. Or I want to go $100. You know, I'm, I'm going to pick that. Uh, and then again, they could say, well, I want to do after tax, after tax Roth. Uh, <clears throat> they can pick. So we're going to leave this on the parsonage example. And I'm going to say that I think I can afford $100 a month. Now, remember, this is monthly. So you check this. You, you sign this. You have to date it. If you don't do any of that, it won't let you out. And you save it. So remember, I got it. I can print it out, but I can remember I'm said I'm going to do $100 pre-tax. So I save that. So now I've figured out how much money I want to do for my salary reduction as part of my pension. So now I have to go back to the compensation report and finish it. So remember, I said I wanted to do $100 a month. And so that's $1,200. So look right here. Right now, I can tell by the 2% that the pastor has not contributed yet to their UMPIP. They're not matching. But once I put in a match, it changes to three. And I know then that the pastor has matched the bill. And, um, and then that concludes what you have to do. Now, if they, if you, if you said, no, I'm going to do this as a, after tax Roth, same concept, still works. So the, you just fill it in. And so what we do, the district office and I, when we get your UMPIP worksheet and your compensation report, we compare those to see if they're filled out correctly. <clears throat> if, uh, if you said you wanted to do 1%, let's just do zero. And 1%, remember down here, 1% of 627.95 would be 627. Watch this. If I only put in 627, it didn't change. Round up. If you aren't doing the 1%, round up. And so that shows you that you put in the appropriate amount for your 1% match. One of the other things I neglected to say is that when you finish filling out your report, contact your district office and they'll sign it. Once they sign it, it's locked. I get a message that it's signed, then I check it. And if I have questions, I'll go back to your district administrator who then will go back to you. Um, so, but once, once it's signed by the district, it's locked to the local church. Uh, the district can unlock it if you decide to change some things during charge conference season. But it, there, I just forgot to say that. So, um, so that, are there questions about the UMPIP and the um, before we move on and the compensate? Which the, um, do you want to go ahead and unmute and ask what you specifically need clarity on? That might be easier. This is Trini from On First Road. Can you go back to the UMPIP worksheet? Please? Worksheet. Yeah. Okay. Oops. What is okay, you want me to click on the worksheet itself? Yes, please. Okay, there you go. Okay, so in number six, 
yeah the far the total i mean the whatever total that will come and this one is a is this for um if you do not check anything like this this is the amount that will come out from the salary of the pastor right if you do not check no. the ways to be uh, to be billed no you have to check everything there this is a worksheet it says nothing except helps you figure out your one percent so you literally this is just for you at the local church and the pastor to fill out no amounts are filled in automatically so even if you did the worksheet and the pastor said, oh, well, I'm just not going to contribute, then you wouldn't put anything in line 10, or, uh, 17 or 18 on the, you input. so no, this is a worksheet. None of these numbers talk to the compensation report. There's no automatic billing for the UMPIP. We, autom uh, we automatically bill for benefits, but this is a salary reduction. The bill comes from Westpath or the general board and uh, that's, it's not automatic. Oh. It's all self-determined. Oh, okay. Training, is your pastor in a parsonage or not? No. Okay, so so in your case, you would fill in the base compensation, whatever uh, housing you have, and then your housing, it's whatever still, utilities, yeah. if they pick it. Yeah. And then we do have the, uh, the uh, exclusion. And right. usually so I would fill, pay. Fill Okay. So you would fill in everything you paid in on the compensation report, the housing yes. allowance, the housing exclusion and compensation. And then that will tell you that pastor's 1%. And then, then you all have to make a decision, you know, am I going for the 1% or then am I- If he selects this uh, monthly, I mean the uh, number seven C, which is after the raw, if he wants to do that, yeah. So you, yeah. you pick which one, some pastors do two or three, which, you know, West Path figures out. I don't have to figure out, I just tell them. But uh, but yeah, no, most of our taxes do, most of our pastors do before tax, which has to do with retirement and housing allowance, another subject. But yeah, no, so the pastor picks. Uh, and um, so if you're filling out the form with him or her, y'all need to talk about it. Okay. Am I answering your question? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. There was another question I don't think we answered that someone wanted me to go over something again. Uh, I think Liz addressed it with Margie and said that she would work with her directly. Um, Mark has a okay. question that says the insurance option period comes after charge conference forms are due. How can you ac accurately answer line 13? He came in late. He said, he's sorry if you've already answered this, but it, a refresher is not bad. Uh, you know, you came in late, but I skipped it. So uh, open. So thank you for asking that question. I apologize. I told Christy, I write down notes and I quit to read. Then I don't read them anymore. Um, <clears throat> open enrollment for the pastor starts November 3rd. And so uh, they don't know yet. Your pastor may not know what he or she is going to health insurance plan they're going to pick, whether they're going to do dental or vision. They may not know at that moment if they're covering their family or if they're making a, um, an FSA or HSA deal. You can leave lines 11 through 15 blank for charge conference if it's before November 3rd through the 18th. And then when after you pick your plans and you print out what you picked, then you can go back to your church office or your, if you don't have a staff yourself and ask the district to unlock the form because you wanna fill in these annual amounts. So we understand that people are starting charge conferences like in a week or two, and you don't know the answers to 11 through 15. So please leave zeros. Uh, and then you can go back in November, early December and adjust it and uh, get accurate annual numbers. So. I do know for a fact that if you call our office and ask for your annual numbers, we're going to say go back to your enrollment and print out what you picked, uh, because then you'll be able to see how much more you owe than the church is going to pay per month. Um, so the church, you're going to be billed $925 a month for sure for the health insurance. It may be that it costs more than that for you, and so you need to fill out this. So. Thank you for asking that question. We understand that you don't have that information yet. 
And we also are happy for you to fix that after you enroll in your health insurance, know what these numbers are. And then, so you just have your district open it, you re-put it in there, resave it, they re-sign it and it's correct. Shirley, can I say something? Yeah, please. Um, I don't can just speak for Metro District. It is of great help to us if you ask for this to be unlocked so that those numbers can be updated once you do know your health care costs because it helps the numbers at checkout be much more accurate. Good point. And then and it just also helps. When, yeah, when the next minister comes in, we have a fair conclusion as to what's a salary reduction and what was part of the actual salary. Correct. Thank you, Liz. Any other questions about compensation report or UMPIP worksheet that I'm missing? Okay, so I wanna go on to the last online form then, and we can come back at the end and answer more questions if it seems clear as mud. So <clears throat> the one thing we have changed is the roster and, um, Oh, see, I've already filled out part of this. Okay, rats. Okay, so if you look on the 19th page of your PowerPoint or your PDF, there's a pop-up note that's gonna come up and it's gonna say, billing contacts are required, lay leaders required. Uh, you can put none in there if it doesn't apply. So I may need to fill out another church. I don't know, Let's. if you need me to show you the pop-up, we'll come back. So new this year, uh, we're trying to streamline our systems in the conference office and you know that you get bills from us, apportionment, property, and some of you get health and pension billing. And so we want the right person to be getting those bills. And so new this year, we've added these three contacts asking you to fill them in. So, um, so I did this earlier today, but let's say, let's update it. Let's, let's decide that I'm not doing it anymore, but Shanna, uh, Porter is okay, and she works here, so all of this is correct. We'll save it. Mm -hmm. So also, she does, she's going to do the property insurance. So we're going to put in Shanna Porter, and again, I, I just didn't take time to fill this out earlier. And all the rest, and you save it. So, but I'm in a real small church and we don't have health insurance and pension billing. So if you just type none in here, uh, you can save it and the pop-up won't pop up anymore. Okay. In addition, we need the lay leader. So you saw that pop-up when I started it and it said you need the lay leader. So the lay leader at our church is named Zachary Head. And anyway, so you'd fill in all this information, you know, head at. And so I'm just not doing it for sake of time, but we need all of that. What we don't want is admin. A lot of your emails are admin at, you can do the admin at, but we need a name with you. You know, so if, it, if I'm the admin at, like Marielle is a CDL admin, but we need Marielle Vela. So, so anyway, these four, the three billing contacts and the lay leader, if they're not filled out, you'll get the pop-up. Doesn't mean you can't save it and leave it. It just means you'll get the pop-up. Then as every year, you're going to have positions already filled in. If it's the same, click up, click update and save, and then a date will pop in and we'll know when you did it. The other thing I want to say is we added another new one down here, disaster response liaison. Jeremy Bassett's our new disaster response coordinator, and he's trying to get a good list of who he would talk to at your local church if there were some sort of disaster. So that's a new position. The other thing is a lot of Churches, your churches are arranged in um, different types of ways, right? So, so here's a church council choice, administrative council chair, administrative board chair, council ministries chair. If you have a simple organization and all of those are just one person, just pick the one of the four you like the best and put it in there. Don't enter that person four times. Uh, if you happen to have an administrative board and a council ministries, you know, remember how the churches used to organize a long time ago and we had both? 
If you still have both, put them in, but you literally don't have to put the same person in all four. Just pick the one that matches your church the best and use one of those uh, categories. So back up here, the other thing I want to say about the roster, because we're trying to streamline and be accurate about who we send our bills to in the local church, if you make a change during the year, if you would remember to come back to the online roster and make this change, you might want to let your district office know also. It could be on any of these positions, but in particular for selfishly for the conference office, if you make a billing change, if you'll go to your online roster and do that and do update, I will actually get an email saying that you updated your billing contact in whatever category, and then I'll make sure our systems get it. Um, that's not true for all these positions, but the ones that uh, are that the pop-up addresses will get that information. This is kind of a, a change. Usually you have charge conference, you fill it out and that's it. You don't ever touch it again. We're asking you to, you as a pastor and or staff to remember that this roster is here and to fill it out when you have changes. Lay member at annual conference or lay leader or whatever. Uh, it's very important that you tell your district office that you change that too, but uh, this will help us going forward to have an updated online roster. Any questions about the roster before I move on? Okay, so I'm gonna leave the online forms. So I'm gonna stop sharing on the online forms and go to our, our conference website. I hope. Maybe I didn't even have to do that, whatever. So can you see, can y'all see this one, Christy? Okay, thanks. So they didn't hire me for my technical abilities. I just wanna say that. Okay, so you will get a checklist from your district of everything you need to turn in. That's been true every year. It's usually pretty close to the same. Remember, we've been doing online forms. Here's the overview, the instructions for the compensation. Here's how you get to the forms. Then you have a bunch of other forms that you have to fill out. This is where you find them. It's on our conference website under Connectional Resources under Charge Conference. So uh, if you have, uh, you know, your pastor has to fill out a report there, then that report is there for the pastor to fill out. Um, if you need to fill out your trustees report, your trustees report is there. And, uh, you know, and it has some things filled in, but not everything. Uh, these coverages, evidently your church has, and you can fill them in. Don't ask me. So, uh, <laughs> but there are people you can ask. Um, so all of these are, um, all these reports that you're being requested to turn in are here on our conference website. That's, and I think the instructions the district sends you directs you there, but just to say that's where they are. And then by September 1st, these checklists will be updated in case you can't find them than the emails that you were sent uh, from your districts. So that, um, that really is the end of what I need to say. Um, and I'm gonna switch it to Marielle. Okay, and then, uh, but at the end of the PowerPoint or PDF I sent you are all your district email and my email if you need to contact us. The district is where you start. It's not that I want to help you. It's just that they know what they've asked you to do for your charge conference. I might not, but I certainly can help you with online forms uh, and specific questions related to compensation. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Marielle. Thank you, Shirley. You guys able to see that okay? Yes. All right. Well, good evening. My name is Mariel Vela, and I am the administrative assistant for the Center for Leadership Development. And I will briefly be going through the required year in forms for clergy and SPRC, including charge profile, review form, marks of fruitfulness, and the clergy personnel form. So these forms are available for completion between September 1st and December 15th. To begin, I'd like to direct you to the Marks of Fruitfulness page that can be found on our website as seen on the slide. Um, on the Mar Marks of Fruitfulness page, you will find the review sheet that you can use to become familiar um, with the skills and competencies that will be evaluated. Um, you'll find SPRC and clergy login information, and you will also find instructions on how to complete the required forms. 
So once you're ready to log in and begin, um, you will visit the website on the slide and log in using the instructions from um, the previous website we just looked at. So just a quick note, I often get asked which year it needs to be um, in that drop down menu. So it'll always be the upcoming year. So just keep that in mind, that gets confusing sometimes. Um, and then this is an example of what the SPRC forms page looks like once you've created a new password. Um, the first form is going to be a very helpful informational document that you will need to start with. Um, the second and third forms are for recommended reading. And then the last three forms are what is actually going to be completed by you. So the charge profile contains questions regarding demographic and statistics for the area. It should be reviewed and updated with current information and the SPRC and pastor should work together to complete it. So because this form is only located on the SPRC login, the pastor will sign and date along with the SPRC. Um, so be sure to select save. And I also recommend copying your work um, as you go into a Word document just to prevent any loss. And then um, on the review form, the SPRC gives general information concerning appointment situation, um, and it must be completed for each uh, appointed clergy person. So just as a quick note, um, a question I receive often is about two point charges. So only one church will have the ability and is required to fill out the review form as well as the marks of fruitfulness forms online. Um, so review and update for current information and then save as you go. And then finally, you will reach the Marks of Fruitfulness Evaluation, and this is your annual assessment for clergy required by the cabinet, and it is used for formational purposes by the SPRC, and this will also um, need to be completed for each appointed clergy person. Again, if you're part of a two-point charge, only one church will have the ability and is required to fill this out. Um, you'll go through each of the three sections and be sure to save as you go. Um, all components must be completed and the system will indicate the progress toward completion. So please note that hitting the complete button will lock the form. So make sure you've made all of your edits before you do that. All right, and then the last four slides I'm sharing with you are examples of the clergy login side. Um, so like SPRC, clergy will use the instructions from that same Marks of Fruitfulness page um, that we looked at from the beginning. And you will have the option to change your password and your form section will look just like this. So like the other forms, you will go through and update for current information. Then you will finally reach the Marks of Fruitfulness page um, evaluation for yourself. So this is your annual assessment required by the cabinet and used for formational purposes by the SPRC. Um, just like the other one, you will go through each of the three sections, complete all the components, and the system will indicate your progress. And then be sure um, you've made all of your edits before you hit that complete button. And that is all I have for you. And I put my email at the very bottom there. So be sure um, to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mariel. So we're open to any questions that you might have. Um, so Tammy Galloway has a question about marks of fruitfulness. She says last year, the forms timed out after a certain amount of time. Will that be the case again this year? I'm not sure of any changes in that. If it happened last year, I, we haven't changed anything since then. So that could be the case. That's why I recommend kind of keeping a document going as you go. Um, just in case, you know, your computer dies, something happens, it's good to just keep that backed up somewhere. Once again, I can only speak for the Metro District, but in the case of two point charges, where each church feels they want their say in mm -hmm. their opinion, I can create a generic Marks of Fruitfulness page, send it to them. Now they will have to, you know, manually fill it out, scan it and email it to me, but it does give a way for both churches to have um, representation with the district superintendent. 
just to back you up, Liz, when I was a district administrator, we did the same thing. Uh, if uh, instead of the two churches having to talk to each other, they could work through me to uh, the church that's not primary to fill out their marks of fruitfulness or whatever they need to fill out review forms. So I think that can be true for any district. If The other thing I want to add is that um, in the case of the church login, oftentimes there's multiple people going in as the church and will change the password. And then the next person that was in it previously can't get into it. And so I can tell you what the password is on each of the levels, but try to minimize the number of people going into the church site. Okay. All right, well, if I don't see any other questions, we truly appreciate your time. We know there are more exciting things to do on a Thursday night at 6 p.m but we are grateful for your time and hope that this will ease your um, experience this fall. You know where to find us if you have any additional questions. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.